Hi friends, it's Mari here for the Vicki Booten Design Team. I have another project today for you using the gorgeous Fernwood Collection. I'm going to be using the Burst Fourth Patterned Paper for my project today. And I'm also going to be using a piece of the Vicki Booten Foundations Paper for the base of my layout. What I wanted to do with this paper is I wanted to cut the paper apart into segments and then use those segments, five of those segments on my layout to help establish a focal point for my photograph. I'm choosing papers here or segments of this paper that are kind of like the teals and the light blues and this really pretty kind of coral color. And I did just receive the new Tim Holtz saltwater taffy color. So I definitely wanted to use that um, <clears throat> for my project today as well as a little bit of speckled egg. And so you'll see um, as I go through here, the photo that I'm going to be using, and I wanted to kind of create a little bit of a pink and blue sort of a color palette here using these uh, burst forth segments. So just gonna finish trimming out the five pieces that I want and I'll set the remainder of this paper aside. And I just, I'm gonna show you here kind of the placement of these papers that I was going for to create this little area sort of at the over to the left and top of my layout. And I also wanted to create a pattern of stitching on my paper here as well. Just, I created a wonky circle on my sewing machine just to add some texture to the background. And this is the sweet little photo of my brand new grandson that I'm going to be photographing today. He is so adorable and <clears throat> well, I guess I'm a little bit biased, but I definitely wanted to scrap this photo of him today as he was having just a nice little snooze. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just distress the long edge of these segments just to give them a little bit more texture on my background here. Now I'm going to place them in the uh, spot that I kind of had them originally when I set them down onto my paper and I kind of just decided that that was a, a good position for these papers to be. You can just see they're offset slightly and I'm going to put a foam dot behind each one of the papers just to give them a little bit of dimension. So you'll just see me here going ahead and adding a foam dot. And what I'm doing is actually I'm adding that between the papers. So none of the paper is actually stuck to the foundations paper yet. There's just a foam dot between each one of those pattern paper segments. Now I'm going to use uh, two stencils from Fernwood here for my project. And there's one stencil from each of the stencil packs, the greenery pack and the bountiful pack. This one I think kind of is meant to look like vines, but I feel like it also kind of looks a little bit like a sweater pattern. So I thought it worked really well with this. And I this is where I use the saltwater taffy oxide ink. And I'm just using a blending brush here just to put a little bit of that through. And <clears throat> I didn't want too much pink on this project, but I just wanted a little bit. So I'm just using a little bit of the saltwater taffy kind of around my pattern papers here. And I just really like how this looks. I think it just adds a little bit of color. It's just gonna be peeking around here on my project. Now I have a little bit of texture paste on my mat, on my table, and I'm mixing a little bit of the oxide ink re-inker with the texture paste to colorize it in that speckled egg, which was the color that I really wanted to use as well on this project. And now this is another one of the stencils. This is not the same stencil that I used already. It's a different one. And I'm just going to run that texture paste through the stencil to create a little bit of texture and create some more color on my white cardstock here. So just doing that little bit of mixed media and it's just going to be really subtle behind all of the different elements that I add on my project. And I just really like doing this. I mean, <clears throat> it doesn't, you don't have to worry about covering up some of your mixed media as long as you can see little bits of it here and there. Now I've also watered down the speckled egg re again here. And I'm just going in with my fan brush and I'm just going to splatter and I'm going to splatter a little bit with the saltwater taffy as well. And but mostly it's going to be blue splatter with just a tiny little bit of that coral color mixed in. So really love that saltwater taffy color. I think it's gorgeous and it does go really nicely with the Fernwood collection. So here you can just see I'm finishing up the splatters um, this time again with that saltwater taffy here. Just going for just a nice little bit of subtle splatter on the layout to create that little bit of detail and texture. Now I'm going to add some layers behind my photograph here for my photo mat and I've just grabbed 
grabbed a bunch of different ephemera pieces. This one actually might even be from one of the cut apart papers from Fernwood. And you'll just see me here working away, adding these different matte layers to the photo. This piece here, I'm gonna cut in half so that I can include it on the top and bottom. And I will texturize these a little bit as well, just to add a little bit of texture there to those different layers. I'm going to add a lot of foam adhesive in the photo mat layers as well between some of these different elements that I'm adding in here. But you can just see I have the die cuts that I've chosen out from the different ephemera packs from Fernwood over to the left. And then as I work away here, I'm just grabbing the different pieces that I might want to use for my project. And again, separating the photo from the different little bits with some foam adhesive, just to create that little bit of extra dimension and interest with the photo mat area. So just gonna go ahead and work away on that here and just love this photo so much. What I did was I printed the photo at 3.5 inches square, I believe. And <clears throat> actually maybe a little bit smaller than that. I wanna say maybe it's even three inch square. And I did use Lightroom to adjust the photo. I Obviously it's black and white, but I did, um, increase the exposure on it a little bit. I just wanted it to be a little bit brighter and lighter. And I really like how the photo pops off of the page when it's all finished here. So using a little bit of the speckled egg with my inking tool here on the edges of some of these different ephemera pieces. I love the die cuts in Fernwood. Um, both of the die cut packs, the one that has the vellum in it and then the other pack, they're both fantastic. And I love how Vicky just packs her her die cut packs so full you get so much in there and they're just these pieces are just so great for layering your photos and your photo mat so just love continuing on adding these layers in behind there and just adding some dimension with those foam dots so it just works out really well and you can just see that I'm just about finished there in fact, maybe I am. And so I'm just gonna trim off the bottom portion of those little segments where they come together and that's gonna be where the photo goes. I thought about using those circles that you can see in the lower left and lower right corners. Those were just punched from one of the, pa the pattern paper that has all of the circles on it. I decided not to use those. I'll actually just put those with the ephemera pieces uh, for another project. But what I wanted to do with these vellum pieces here is just staple them together and use those for an ephemera piece over to the left. And I love that. I think that's just perfect. Um, really, really lovely for embellishing the side of this just really soft photo. I wanted the layout to just be, you know, really nice and soft. I wanted there to be lots of white space still, but some nice texture and details as well. Now, I love this die cut camera from the ephemera. I wish I had about 50 of those. I love them so much. And I really like this ephemera piece here that has the, I think it says happiness is or something like that. I don't have the layout in front of me and it's hard to see as I'm voicing this over on my tiny little thumbnail on my screen. But um, the vellum circle that I'm going to use underneath that says simple pleasures. So I think it says happiness is simple pleasures. And then my journaling reflects that as well. So I just love that. I thought that piece goes really nice with the saltwater taffy. And I love this circle vellum piece. Once again, love that so much. And the the kind of like the segments on that pie chart go really nicely with the segments from the burst forth paper. So I thought that worked really well. Now what I did was I die cut out a scallop circle to go behind that, to layer behind that vellum piece. And I used a little bit of vellum adhesive to um, adhere that down to my white cardstock scallop circle. I'm going to pop that up with some foam adhesive again. I realize I have that on there crooked and I'm gonna work away. Eventually I will get that on there straight, I promise. And here you can just see those really cute little banners with the words on them over to the left. I'm just straightening them out a little bit. Now I wanted to take a little bit of the chipboard. I love the chipboard um, sheets from Vicky's collections. Always one of my favorite embellishments. I wanted to use one of these little pie chart circles for the center of the camera. I'm just using a little bit of that um, library card die cut piece which I you know what I've used that on a bunch of different uh, projects by just using bits of it and I think this is still that same 
um, library card, that same one library card. I think I've used it. This maybe is the third layout that I've used that one card on. And I just wanted to layer that in behind. And I think I also put a chipboard um, phrase on that just above the photo in green there you can see. And now I'm going to add a couple more of those little chipboard pie chart dots. I wanted to add one there and then I'm going to add one another one I think maybe no that's it that's it there's one on the camera and then one by the banners and then one down by that um, vellum circle in the lower right now I'm also going to add a little phrase sticker from the sticker sheets above the photo as well and now I just have to add my journaling strip so what I did was I used my vintage typewriter to type out my journaling there's just three strips here that I have trimmed out into some nice skinny strips and I'm just going to add some foam adhesive on the back. I just wanted to grab my T-square and make sure that my photo is straight before I add these um, these journaling strips because I was going to line them up with the photo and if the photo is crooked well then of course these journaling strips would be crooked so I just wanted to make sure everything was more or less straight and I'm just going to use these um, 3L adhesive strips to put onto my sentiment so that they're uh, or my journaling so that they're pop, popped up a little bit off the layout and I will just use my honeybee tweezers to help me place these once I get the backer off the back of that adhesive and that's pretty much going to finish up my layout. I did want to use my acrylic my white acrylic paint to do some splattering so I'm just holding that up so that I can see that that is straight. And I've just put a little bit of white acrylic paint on my desk and watered it down. And now I'm just taking my fan brush and I'm going to just splatter. But you can see I have my photo covered and anything that has text on it that I don't want to um, get any sort of white paint on it so that you can't read it or it makes it look weird. I've just got that covered up. And of course, I've covered my photo. I don't want any paint on my sweet little grandson's photo here so I'm just going to go ahead and finish and I wanted to give you a close-up and so that you can see all of the texture and dimension on this project I really love how this turned out I love Fernwood it's just amazing I love all of Vicky's collections but this one is just really special to me I just really really love it a lot and I'm really excited to make some more projects with this. Thanks friends for joining me today. I hope you liked this. Make sure that you like and subscribe and leave me a comment and let me know what you thought about this project. And I hope to see you again here on YouTube with more Fernwood and Vicki Booten inspiration coming to you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.